Hi, Freedom Queen, the day-to-day habits of being a successful entrepreneur. There are many things that I have done over the last year and a half to build a $300,000 business. You know, today I was looking at my bank statements and I was looking at the income coming in and I was like, holy crap, I've done $90,000 in cash in three months. And when I was making $50,000 a year in New York City, I worked more than 40 hours a week. And it's just insane to me that I've now done $90,000 cash, like cash, right? So even when I was doing the 50K a year, it wasn't 50K because of taxes and all of the things and like insurance and like whatever else was taken out of it. I don't even remember all the things New York City and the government took out of it, but it was like, okay, now there's $90,000 cash coming into my account. I work on calls two days a week. I live on an island. I work for myself. It's just like, and I don't work 40 hours a week and I'm happy and I take care of myself. It's like, it's so much more than even just making a lot of money. It's like, I have the freedom and abundance internally. Like not only am I not stressed, but I love who I am and I love what I'm doing. And I'm excited about work every day and excited about waking up. And I, and like today I got to go to a spa and I, it's, it was 150 baht, which is $5 in us dollars. And we went in the sauna, the iced cold pool, the steam room, and it was just amazing. And I was thinking a lot about the actions you take as an entrepreneur in order to make money, in order to have this abundant lifestyle. And there are certain habits and things that I do that I wanted to share with you that I know are going to be really helpful for some of you that are like not there yet. So one of the first thing that comes to mind is really paying attention to your circle and who you're surrounded by. When I was first starting out, I hung out with a lot of people that were at the same level as me. And as I began to grow my business, I really started to realize like, wow, not everyone was as serious about this as I was. So I would notice like they would give up or they would try for a little bit and then ghost and then try and then ghost. But I couldn't really find anyone at my level that was working as hard or as dedicated as I was. And so I had to leave those circles and get around people that were more successful than me. And this was a really big game changer because some, some people were my friends and we don't, we don't talk anymore. Some of them, um, some of the relationships I just had to like, literally, like literally walk out on and leave. And it was really hard, but I'm still really glad I did that. And just looking back on it all, because it, it was really affecting who I was. Like they just had such lack limiting belief mindsets lack in everything. And I realized like, I can't, you are who you surround yourself with and I couldn't do it anymore. And so I started hanging out with people that challenged me that disagreed with what I said, or they thought my, they thought my goals were too small. And I started to hang out with people that were more successful than me versus being like the only person in the room that was successful to a certain caliber. So taking a look at your circle and who you're surrounded with, you know, if you're only around people that are at quote unquote your level, get in the room with people that are further ahead than you or more embodied and grounded in who they are. It will really change everything about your life. People who really love themselves, who love growing, who love just challenges in general. I think that those people, it's just, it's just unmatched. You want to get in those circles. The other thing that I started to do was pay attention to my consumption of materials. So I was no longer consuming mass media, no longer consuming the news or headlines in, on the news or anything going with the government or anything like that. Because I real, realized and recognized it was so negative. The material was so negative, fear mindset based, designed to scare you, designed to put you in the box and stay inside all of the time. And so I had to cut that out of my life. And then going off of that, there was a lot of things that just are mass pushed onto society, like binge drinking or especially in America, it's like overconsumption, like constantly consuming, consuming, 
whether you're going to Target or Marshalls or Amazon two-day shipping and you just want to buy all of the time or it's like all you can eat, all you can drink and there's like so much consumption happening. You're consuming so much, whether it's media or food or alcohol or shopping that you don't even have the space to create. And as an entrepreneur, as an artist, you are creating. So stop consuming so much material and start creating. Like even right now recording this, I could be consuming, but instead I'm creating and giving back to my community and my audience. So where can you stop consuming so much and start creating in your life? And then health has been a really big part of my journey and working on my nervous system. I grew up with I would say in my teens, teens and early college, really bad anxiety and like panic attacks and just crazy, crazy things. And it wasn't until I graduated from college and was living in New York City for those three to four years living on my own. And I really started to go on this health journey of just taking care of myself. And ever since starting my business, I've pretty much like this year in 2022, I have taken out alcohol completely from, I don't drink alcohol. And since I started my business, it's just been like a downward slope with alcohol. I just don't drink it. I, I, for me personally, I don't think that it's good for you. And that's coming from my own experiences and backgrounds. You, you have to know the context behind that, but I think that if you're using it as a crutch, then it's probably something you shouldn't be doing, you know, and that's for anything. If you're using social media as a crutch or a relationship or sex or anything, right? It's just, it's not good for you. So for me, taking that out of my life has totally changed. I was just talking about drinking today and I was saying like, oh yeah, it'd be so weird. Um, and so funny, like if I do choose to drink again and what that would be like, and then I thought like, oh my God, I don't want to have to be hung over. Like that sounds terrible. Like there are days now, you know, I eat really healthy. I work out, I get sleep. And there are still some days where I feel quote unquote bad. So I'm like, I can't even imagine not like like being hung over. Like I can't even imagine being hung over and waking up and feeling that. So cutting that out of my life has really, really changed and helped me. And then also just paying attention to my habits in terms of what I'm eating and how I'm taking care of myself. I, in Koh Samui, where I live right now in Thailand, I have a personal trainer and she also cooks for me, which is really nice. And it has so helped with my mental health and energy and how I show up. And so, you know, even when I was just starting in my business, I still hired a personal trainer because I know myself. And if I don't have accountability, like I'm not going. So whatever it is, like even if it's an accountability partner or someone, get yourself moving, make sure that you're eating well, taking care of yourself. And of course, I'm all about balance with consumption. Like I still have chocolate croissants like all the time because that's my weakness. And I do like a lot of caffeine. So that's my, that's my next thing I'm tackling. But you know, it's like having the self-awareness of, you know, when you're going too far one way and you're consuming too much of something. Like I was ordering so much takeout the last few weeks and my boyfriend and I, we were just like, we need to, we need to change something about this. This is just not okay. And so we worked with my personal trainer to create us meal plans. And that has changed a lot. Other things that have really helped me grow this business of 300,000 in terms of habits is setting up boundaries with people in my life. So like I said earlier, you you cut out all those people that just aren't supportive of where you're going, but you're still going to have people in your life that you can't cut out. Right. And it's not saying you have to cut out everyone, but it's boundaries. So someone recently asked me like, how do you, how do you talk with your family about your business? And I'm just like, I don't like, I'll give them very limited information on my business, but my business is my business. And I don't feel the need to talk about it. You know, if it's going to be a point of contention and it's going to be awkward with your family members, don't bring it up. I, I have just found like, that's just the boundary I, I create for myself. I love my business. It is my obsession. I just love creating this, this organism, this thing. And so I'm not going to talk about it. And so boundaries, 
there are many things even in, I have learned over the last year in my relationship that I don't need to share everything about my business with my partner. Like I used to tell them everything and would go off on him about like, this is happening and this is happening and this client and this client. And, and now I just don't, I just, I find that in my relationship, there are like certain things I want to bring up about my business. And then there are certain things that I can save for myself in my CEO conversations or with my team or with my mentor or with God, just like, it doesn't need to be shared with everyone. And having those boundaries in place have really helped me actually be able to make more money because I feel like my energy is cleaner. Like it's, it's not so spread out and all over the place. So that's something to have self-awareness around. Do you really need to share everything about your business with your partner? Again, it's like, that's just the intentionality. Like, you know, your relationship best and you know yourself and pay attention to your energy. Um, growing to 300,000 and some of the habits and, and actions that I do behind the scenes, I also am learning a lot all of the time. So I will go through waves and I would say it was actually, hmm, I don't even know if it was more in the beginning because I still learn a lot. But the, my point of this is I educate myself a ton. Like I'm, ne I'm never not learning something, but I'm also always taking action. So it's like, I'm learning, I, I'm educating, I'm learning, I'm developing, I, I'm doing these things and I'm taking action. So whether it's like an old training by, by your mentor, like if you're one of my clients listening to this, like go to our Facebook group, go to your members portal. Everyone gets lifetime access to the members portals, like go in there and binge the trainings and learn because I guarantee there's something from that training that you missed. And when you listen to it the second time, it'll sink in differently. Even like this YouTube or this podcast episode right now, like go and reconsume it again and again and again and save it. Like listen to it when you're in the shower or if you're driving or wherever, let that information sink in. I know I've heard of some like crazy entrepreneurs, like they're like, I will listen to books in my sleep. I'm like, okay, no, no. <laughs> that is next level. And I'm not doing that. And I don't even know if that's good for you. <laughs> so, you know, what I'm saying is I learn a lot, a lot of education and on the days where I don't have clients. So I, I don't do any calls. I only do calls on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And so Thursdays through Mondays, it's basically like me time, creation time. Right now I'm recording this on a Thursday and it's like six o'clock my time. Yeah, 6.40 my time. And so I have the space to create and this is something I wanted to do. But just 10 minutes before recording this, I was watching a video training from a mentor that I really look up to. So it's like, I'm always learning. I, the only thing I can compare this to is pre business owner, or I had a business at the time, but let's say pre, like pre when I was serious about business, pre when, like basically at this time in my life where I thought like maybe one day, but probably not, I'm not going to be successful like that. Like I'll just always have a nine to five and like stay in New York city for a while and just like live the regular nine to five or American lifestyle. I wouldn't educate myself. Like I spent a lot of time doing weird stuff, like just kind of filler things. Like I was always busy when I, when I wasn't building my business, I was always busy. And that's why I just posted my Instagram story. And I said, um, I'm so busy is the mantra for broke people. Cause it totally is like, I was just so busy walking dogs or like I had like errands like that's my favorite thing like busy people are like I have so many errands it's like what are you what are you what are you actually doing like what are your what are your actual errands like if you have kids that's another thing but that's also not even an excuse because I know so many moms that are really successful online like so that's just an excuse but I love when people are like Bridget like I can't put my business I wasn't I'm in a job I'm like what do you think I did I was in a job too so it's like what, what are you busy doing? What, like, I think a lot of times people that are new to business, they're so busy, quote unquote, because they're actually just like, they have no idea what they're doing. Like they really don't understand 
entrepreneurship and they don't know what actions to take or where to go, which is why I have the Make Money membership, by the way, to solve this massive problem with, within entrepreneurs. So they're just like busy. They're like, I have errands, I have laundry, I have this, I have to run here and there. And it's like, okay, if you're, especially if you're in a job, like go get your work done, take care of yourself, work on your business, work done, take care of yourself, work on your business. And by work on your business, like the only real things you have to work on your business in the beginning is content, like building a brand on social media. That's it. So I'm like confused on what else you have to do. But again, I get it because I used, I used to be there. And, and honestly, the, the busyness was just kind of like, I would go to coffee shops and say like, oh, I'm working, but I had no idea what I was doing. So I'd open up like 20 million tabs and just kind of let my anxiety rule the show. So if you're someone that says like, oh, I'm so busy, what the heck are you busy with? Like audit your schedule, cut stuff out. And it's not going to be like one week you're so busy. And the next week you're like, oh, Bridget, like I have it all done. I'm so cleared out. All of the excess is gone. I'm so streamlined. Like this could take you a month. It could take you six months. It could take you a year. And honestly, I think it's just an evolution of, of growth. Like even where I'm at now, it's 10 times better when I started. And I'm sure I know there are areas for growth in terms of efficiency, productivity, and cutting extra things out. Actually, right now I'm doing a big wipeout of a lot of things in my business. And I'm just like, let, where can we cut? Because I need this simpler. <laughs> so if you're someone that's claiming the I am busy role, freaking stop that now because you're not busy. You're just not prioritizing. And I guarantee you're using the word busy as a filler for different things. So I think I got a little down the rabbit hole with that one, but I think obviously that was super important and someone needed to hear that. So there's something on my skin here. Um, and someone needed to hear that because you're not busy. You just have to prioritize differently. So these are some of the habits and things that I have done in my business over the last year and a half to build it to 300,000. And I, I share them because I felt like when I first started, no one was actually condensing the information in like this in just such a normal humanized way. They were either sharing the information like, here are my million dollar secrets, drink water all day long. And I was like, okay, I, I get the basics. I get the basics, but can you dive into this a little bit more? So my goal for, for you is for you to always get really easy information, digestible information for you to dive into and to understand so you can have this business that you want and this life that you want. Okay, Freedom Queen, if you have questions or a episode that you would like made for you, you can let me know, comment, share it, post it to your Instagram and tag me so I know that you're watching, you're listening, and I will see you in the next one.